So when it comes down to life, practical things, like for example, if you don't use it, you lose it. This is a principle that if you don't use, say, as you're getting older, you know, if you don't use your brain, if you don't exercise this up here, people start to get dementia, people start to have memory loss, etc. And it's because they need to exercise this, they need to use it more. You know, likewise, if you don't use your joints, you don't use your muscles, you're a couch potato all the time, you know, and, and you don't want to get up and exercise. When you do get up, you know, everything hurts. Everything is like, you need WD-40 on your joints kind of thing just to like, oh, okay, you know, you got to exercise. So the, the, the principle there is that if you don't use it, you lose it. But the same thing applies to the kingdom when it comes to the things of God. He gives you things so that you could use it. He doesn't give you things so you could just have it. So if you have wisdom of, of insight on the things of God, if He's revealed certain things to you and put it on your heart, you need to share that with other people because there's somebody out there that that information can save their life, save their soul, get them out of a pit, get them out of... So it's your testimony or it's your wisdom that it can help people out, right? It's like a ladder that you put into the to the pit. And they're in the pit, they can't get out. But your information, right, can be that useful, you know, um, they step up out of their pit with that useful information they can utilize and exercise their free will to, to climb out of the pit themselves. So... If you don't use it, you lose it. That goes with anointing. That goes with wisdom and understanding. That goes with the things that God has given you. Um, he gave it to you with the purpose and the condition that you were going to share it with other people. God's heart is that we multiply everything He gives us. God's, yeah, that's His vision. Is that He's like, I'm going to give this to you. If it's like, let's say it's resources. Let's say it's money. You, you have an excess amount of money, and it's like you're supposed to use this to help other people, say the poor, the needy. You know, what, what God says in the Bible, you know, to take care of the orphans and the widows, you know, visit the prisoners in jail. These are the things that they're going to separate you from the rest of the people. You really want to become a Christian, an authentic, genuine Christian. And there's a few things you got to do. First, you got to be a doer of the word. A doer of the word, meaning action, speak louder than anything else. And so the action will precede your fruit. Now your fruit is what's bearing on your branches. You will know them by their fruit. So don't be a Christian just by title and label and say, you know, like people just know you because you say you are. But your actions don't reflect that. The Bible refers to that as a hypocrite. Right? It's like you have to match what it is that you say you are with with uh, your actions, right? For example, uh, to make it in, uh, in terms of what people can understand, in the world, if you didn't match being a gangster with being tough, then, then you weren't a gangster. You know what I mean? If you didn't match that with violence, then you weren't you weren't authentic, right? If you didn't match that with stealing, you, then you were a fraud in that world. Those things are the fruit of calling yourself that, right? It's like calling yourself um, a hacker, let's say, a person that, that that's proud of being a hacker. Um, but but not not having the the education and the wisdom on, on how to actually go and hack people or not having a resume of hacking anybody. I'm just putting it in an example where people can understand that when you call yourself something, there ought to be the fruit that matches up with what you say you are. And so when God gives you anything, it doesn't matter what it is, resources, money, uh, wisdom, anointing, whatever it is, if you have a gift of being hospitable and you just want to help people use that because he gave it to you for that reason for you to use it not to hold back if you see somebody on a wheelchair and you have a heart to help people 
um, in these types of conditions that can't help themselves and you hold that back from them that is something that you're you're put on earth for that's what you are here for that's your assignment your assignment is to go and branch out and do those things and so I just want to like let you know that don't hold back like be who you are like your authentic version of who you are and don't be ashamed of the goodness that's in your life I was ashamed of being good when I was trying to be a gangster right and mind you I wasn't trying to be a gangster it was like I got really good at it but underneath all of that education of how to talk about and how to be about it and how to do that life behind all of those layers underneath all that was a person that just really wanted to get along with people and wanted to you know uh, be friendly and, and, and it was just a good guy you know a guy that would help you if you needed help with no reservations with not with nothing no conditions no strings attached but in that world of being a gangster and being tough and this and that, that all of that is frowned upon. It's like, don't show that kind of stuff. So, because you're soft if you do. And so it's like, I had, I, there was a phase in my life where I, I stuffed that deep, deep, deep down. And all you, you, you should be known for is, you know, the dirt you do to other people and this and that. And so it's like, that's how you climb uh, the ladder and reputation and stuff like that. But that's like the devil's uh, reputation, and, and you get uglier and dirtier. You smell more. You you you're just you start to look like a demon. <laughs> you know what I mean? The more you you represent what they stand for, and so you know, it took it took a lot of uh, resurrection power of God in me to resurrect the goodness that. I uh, I had inside of me the whole time, but I never utilized it. I was stuffing it down. I was closing the door on it. I was ashamed of showing that because I didn't want to be perceived as weak or soft or or made fun of or this or that. I just I wanted to fit right in. I wanted to not stand out. And now I look for opportunities to do the opposite. Now all I do is stand out, right? And people are gonna talk no matter what. It takes just as much energy to to fit in than it does to stand out. Like, just be you and be be proud of how God created you to be and utilize those gifts and those talents because somebody out there is praying for the gift that you have. In other words, they're praying for somebody to comfort them. Uh, they're praying for a friend. They're praying for love. They're praying for help. And then all of a sudden, that comes very natural to you. That's like drinking water to you. That's like, oh man, that's nothing to me. That's like blinking. Like, it doesn't cost me anything. I actually enjoy doing it. Well, that's a gift that God gave you so that you could use it. And so, again, somebody's praying for that. You, it comes very natural to you. And God just ex expects for there to be an exchange between you and that person so that he could use you. And then you start to climb. And, and God using you more and more as a servant of the Most High, and you start to accumulate treasure in heaven, and your crown in heaven starts to get built more and more, because the crown starts to, to form, right? And he starts to add to the crown, the jewels and and the rubies and diamonds, etc., and building it up bigger and bigger. There's going to be some people with humongous crowns in heaven because of how much work and labor and sacrifice and offerings they put in for God on earth. And there's going to be people with small little crowns, hardly ever noticeable, all because they put in the bare minimum and they just didn't care enough to, to really do it. But I just learned that we all naturally have God in us, like to do good, you know, either to dogs or... You know, there's dog lovers, there's, I mean, just do what's natural to you because that's what God put inside of you, you know, to be on earth because the world needs you now more than ever.